We are here in Malden Wood, a site of special scientific interest of around about 149 hectares in size and the largest remnants of ancient woodlands in Bedfordshire. There are a lot of interesting things that you can find in woodlands like this, so hopefully we're going to take the camera around, show you some of the sites and hopefully find some of the smaller, more interesting insects that we can along the way. Once you enter the forest, the trees begin to close in overhead, blocking out a lot of the outside noise and giving you a feeling of true solitude. But you are, of course, not alone. My first find of the day was this beautiful ladybug, shown up close here. It even moves one of its little feet. Look, oh, isn't that just gorgeous? Not too far from the ladybug, I then discovered these beautiful flowers, but realized there was a small amount of drama going on in the background. This beetle is trapped, or at least I thought he was. And this here is what managed to catch him or at least almost catch him. This spider, I believe, is a member of the orb weaver family. However, at this point, I'm not sure which member he is. I just want to quickly say that all of this commentary has been recorded a good few days after the video was taken. Uh, this is the first time I've ever tried to do anything like this, so just thank you for bearing with me if it seems to be a little disjointed. But anyway, moving swiftly onwards, this clip is the tail end of what I believe is some form of small mite. Now unfortunately it did leave my sight at this point, but I do have this photograph of it showing this wonderful iridescence that you can see on the rear end. And here's another small shot I managed to catch it of the mite just slowly making its way back off into the undergrowth. There then came a small period where I wasn't really able to find much for a while. Now luckily, this did change when I found one of my good old favourites. Lithiobus forficatus, the brown centipede, a species that I've talked about plenty of times before. I apologise for the shaky camera here, it was in a pretty awkward position, I was trying to steady it so you could get that beautiful close up there of those big meaty teeth. The centipede is of course a predator and uses those big teeth that aren't actually teeth but rather well adapted legs that serve a much more nefarious purpose now to hunt other small insects such as millipedes. I managed to capture these moments in this small plastic tub. Uh, moving the centipede in there was as simple as picking up the leaf as he was standing on and then he was released back out into the wild. Uh, it would appear that my tripod has been hijacked. Our hijacker is what I believe to be a spotted crane fly. Scientific name Nephrotoma appendiculata. These are often mistaken for spiders, but in reality they are a member of the true flies family. Goodbye, you funny little fly. Here in the foreground you can see a small male specimen of a yet unknown spider species to me. The female specimen sits just behind, keeping a very close eye on his movements. Here's a replay of that first clip in slow motion. Here you can very clearly see the male using his leg to drum on the web. He's letting the female know he's there, which is a true sign that he's ready to mate. The female, however, isn't sure, and continues to have this standoff with him, prompting to try something a little different. You see that? He vibrated his entire body instead of just one leg. He is really trying to let her know that he's there. This was the moment I thought I'd been waiting for. The female begins to make some moves towards the male, very cautiously moving her way across the web. She is now 100% certain that he is here. At this point, the male decides to freeze. This may be the reason why the female doesn't come directly over to him, but unfortunately, as you see here, starts making her way over to the other side of the web. She does unfortunately continue this path, moving further away from the male, who continues to sit completely still, probably filled with thoughts of, was it something I said? Don't you worry, little buddy. I'm sure she'll come around eventually. Last episode we talked about Lithiobus forficatus, which was the brown centipede. Now, one of the things that the brown centipede does a lot better than all of the other species of centipede is run away from you. For example, I have this centipede here on my arm. Let's see if I can uh, have a zoom in there. And he is just chilling. Yeah, he, he doesn't, uh, he is not bothered at all by uh, what's going on around him. He's just happy to just chill and calm 
which is why I can tell this is not L4 Ficatus. This is uh, something completely different. And there he goes. Oh, where's he gone? Hello, matey. There he is. Again, same with uh, the rest of the centipedes. This one, if I were to be a little bit too rough or a little bit too uh, quick moving him around, he would be able to give me a pretty pretty decent bite. Same as the rest of them, and there he is. Again, completely chilled out. Hang on. There we go. Oh, no we don't. There we go. Look at him. Quite a stunning little guy. Better to uh, set him free and go and find some other bugs. Before I did let him go, I did have the opportunity to get a little up close with the camera and have a real good look at that face of his. I now know this species to be known as Lithobius variegatus, commonly called the banded centipede, named after those lovely purple and black bands on its legs. While I was recording this impressive centipede, I noticed something a lot smaller moving right next to it. The quality of the video isn't fantastic, but even from this small clip I can tell that it's definitely some kind of mite. I'm also not sure who won the wrestling match between the mite and the piece of dirt. On a nearby fallen log I found this, which I think is also another banded centipede, having recently gone through a molt, hence why the colours aren't as dark as usual. It also could just be a banded centipede that has colour variation within the species. In fact, in this last clip you can quite clearly see the bands on the centipede's rear legs. I even got this up close shot of the rather cute face of this particular centipede. Whilst clearing out my tub of the last centipede, I managed to catch this video of a springtail running around in the detritus left behind. The video doesn't really do justice to how incredibly tiny this animal was. I even found another banded centipede hanging out in the remnants. After leaving behind what seemed to be Centipede Central, I made my way down this particular path which I decided to share with you all because of its incredible beauty. It was at this point in my editing studio that I realised that I am an incredibly slow walker, so I have decided to speed this up a little bit for you. The wildflowers are a large part of any woodland, and Maldon Wood does not disappoint on its quality and its quantity of wildflowers in the area. When I got a closer look at this flower here in particular, I noticed that there was a small spider exoskeleton inside there, meaning a spider decided it was a safe enough place for him to shed his skin. Before moving on too much further, I decided to just take a moment to enjoy the bird song. This tiny little spider I found clinging to the head of a piece of grass, or grass if you prefer. This is a crab spider in the Philodromus genus, which are a species of rather flat crab spiders. He also did not have a problem telling me to back off when I got a little bit too close. After filming this tiny spider, I discovered that my tub, which I had left on the ground, was being explored by this beautiful Trachosa ruricola specimen. And she's, uh, she's gonna be a mother soon. She's in a family of spiders called wolf spiders, which show some incredible parental prowess by carrying around this egg sac filled with her young at all times. This by far gives the young the best chance of reaching the age when they can hatch. And just as quickly as she arrived, off she went.
Spiders form a very important part of any ecosystem, and while they may not be everyone's cup of tea, it's important to remember that without these cute little eight-legged friends, we would be up to our various body parts in flies, mosquitoes, and other small, annoying insects that people tend to like even less. So, the next time you see an arachnid, like this gorgeous little apilion species of harvestman spider, maybe just try saying hello. It's important to remember that these animals are way more scared of you than you are of them. Uh, at least in most cases. My housemate would probably disagree with me there. My next find was a very exciting one for me, as it was actually the first time that I've ever seen this species out and about in the wild. This is Cercopis vulnerata. It's a frog hopper. Frog hoppers are a super family of hemiterran insects, also known as true bugs. Young frog hoppers are better known as spittle bugs, which are responsible for creating these beautiful spit-like structures on plants during the spring. Adult frog hoppers get their name from their incredible ability to jump, some species being able to jump 70 centimeters vertically, which doesn't sound like a lot, but compared to their body size, this is actually a more impressive jump than that of the flea. On my way back to the car park, I discovered a good few beetles, including this one, which I believe is a seed beetle of the Riparochromis genus. Next up was this beautiful species, which I've recently discovered used to be called Calicorus quadripunctatus, but has since been reclassified as Rhabdomyris striatellus. I also found dozens upon dozens of these, which are known as cardinal beetles. This, specifically, is a red-headed cardinal beetle, Pyrocora serraticornis. There are three species of cardinal beetle that the name refers to, this being the most common of them. The cardinal beetles are predators, and they use their powerful jaws to prey on smaller insects which make up the majority of their diet. It's widely regarded that their bright colours serve as a defence mechanism, fooling other predators into believing that they are indeed toxic, when in reality, they are not. Still, I wouldn't recommend going out and eating them. My second to last find of the day was this wonderful little moth, which showed an incredible amount of iridescence along the wings. While I'm not ready to provide a 100% positive ID on this moth at this point, it does show a lot of similarities between other species of moths, such as forester moths. With these similarities, I feel fairly confident to say that this moth is definitely in the Zyganidae family. Although, this doesn't narrow it down much, as there are over 1,000 species of moth in the Zyganidae family. While I was using the last of my time in the forest to record some more bird sound, something managed to catch my eye. I quickly shimmied the camera over and managed to catch some real nice close-up footage of this little insect. This is a robber fly. More specifically, this is a Silus crabroniformis, more commonly known as a hornet robber fly. These are a predatory fly and one of the largest flies we can find in this country. As you could probably hear, at this point the wind had picked up quite a lot and I figured this was a very good point for me to leave it for the day. And with that, my day out in Malden Wood was over, so all that remains now is to thank you very much for sitting through this video and listening to me babble on about bugs for however long it's been. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will be returning to Malden Wood and a few other sites to hopefully create more videos of this nature. I just want to give a massive thank you to my family and my friends who've been messaging me telling me how much they've been enjoying these videos. You're the only reason that I've managed to power my way through this 10 to 12 hours of editing that I've done in this video, and I do really hope you enjoy it, and I will see you in the next one.